to the channel guys. So in today's video, we'll be using the contacts API from Expo to load our contacts from our device. And then we'll be adding this text input with which we can search through those contacts. It'll be a fuzzy search. So as you can see here, if you type in any letter, you'll be able to match your contacts and you can search by the first or last name. As always, this should be fun to build. So let's begin. So here in front of me, I have an empty React Native project that I created with Expo and I'm running it on my iPhone X simulator. Let's start by getting rid of this view here and add another view. Let's give that a flex of one. And inside that we need a text input. Let's go ahead and import text input from React Native. Let's pass in the text input. Let's give it a placeholder of search. Let's style it by giving it a background color of this dark blue and give it a height of 50. Let's save that out. And there we see we're getting our text input, but it's getting hidden below the notch. So for that, let's import in safe area view. Let's pass in that safe area view right above the text input. And let's also give that a background color, similar to the background color of the text input. That looks much better. Let's also pass in a placeholder text color as a nice gray. Let's increase the font size to 36. Give it a padding of 10. And let's set the color of the text that's typed to white. Next, let's go ahead and add our view here, which will hold our contact list. So below our text input, let's pass in another view. Give it a flex of one. And let's give it a background color of the same blue that we've been using. To separate the text input from the view, let's give the text input a border bottom. So we'll say border bottom width of 0 0.5 and a border bottom color what we'll do is we'll change this color to a lighter version of the blue. And that looks much better. Inside this view, we want to display the contacts inside a flat list. And when the contacts are loading, we want to show an activity indicator. For that, let's import in flat list from React Native. And let's also import activity indicator. Here, we'll set up a default state. So we'll say constructor, super, and we'll say this dot state is loading. And by default, let's set that to true. In our view here, we'll check if this dot state dot is loading is true. Then we want to pass in a view. We'll position this view absolutely by passing in style sheet dot absolute fill, align item center, and justify content center. Inside that, we'll pass in our activity indicator. Give it a size of large and we'll give it a color of this nice green. Otherwise, we'll display nothing. So there we see we're getting our activity indicator. So below this, let's pass in our flat list. The data for this flat list will be this.state.contacts. Let's go ahead and set up this state. So here by default, contacts will be an empty array. We'll pass in the render item method, which will be called for every item in the list. So here, let's call this.renderItem. And here we'll just pass in a list empty component, which will basically just be a text which says no contacts found. Let's just set the color for that to the same color as a loading indicator. Let's save that. As we see, we're getting no contacts found here and we're getting this activity indicator. Let's just set is loading to false by default. And also instead of just passing a text, let's pass in a view, which has a flex of one and it aligns its items to the center. We'll just also give it a margin top of 50. So first thing is it's checking if it's loading. If it'll be loading, it'll show you an activity indicator, which is positioned absolutely. Next, it has a flat list, which checks if this.state.contacts exists, then you show the contact list here with this render item method, which we have to set up. Otherwise, just show this empty component. Let's go ahead and import the device's contacts. Coming here on top, I'm going to import in contacts from Expo. And we'll set up the component did mount method. We'll just make this method asynchronous by passing async. Inside this, we'll call this dot load contacts. Let's go ahead and create this dot load contacts. Again, this will be an asynchronous method. We'll ask for the permission by saying const permission, which is equal to await export dot permissions dot ask async. Inside this, we want export dot permissions dot contacts. We'll check if permission dot status is not equal equal to granted. 
then we just exit out of the function. Otherwise, we'll store the data into a constant called data by saying await contacts dot get contacts async, which is a method available to us. And the fields we want are the contacts dot fields dot phone numbers and contacts dot fields dot emails. After this, we'll say this dot set state contacts and set that to the data that we received. And here we'll also set is loading to false. Let's just make this load contacts. So before load contacts is called here, we'll say this dot set state and set is loading to true. As we can see, it asks us for the permission and we can allow that permission. As of now, obviously we haven't set up this render item method. So let's go ahead and do that. See here we have render item. In that we'll deconstruct the item object. We'll return a view here. Let's give that view a minimum height of 70 and let's give it a padding of five. Inside that we'll pass in a text, which will be the item dot first name and item dot last name. Shortly, we'll have a look at the terminal where you'll be able to see these properties. Come down here, we'll pass in another text and that will say item dot phone numbers. We want to access the first element in the array and then we want to get the digits. Let's save that out. As you can see, we're getting all our numbers. We obviously need to style them. And we're also getting this warning for virtualized list missing keys for items. So let's first fix this error. Come to our flat list and here we'll pass in a key extractor Inside that we have an item and the index. We'll use the index and the key needs to be a string. So we'll use two string and there should be a comma here. Let's save that. And we see that warning is gone. Now let's style our text fields. So the first name and last name, we'll give this a color of the green that we're using. We'll give it a font weight of bold and we'll give it a font size of 26. Let's save that. Similarly for the phone number, we'll just style that, give it a color of white and a font weight of bold. And just put in a equal to here. So that's much more readable. Before we proceed any further, in our load contacts, let's just log out our contacts. Here, we'll just say console.log and let's just log out the data. As you can see, we're getting back each contact. That contact has a first name and a last name, and then it has a phone numbers array within which we're accessing the object, which is in position zero, and then getting the digits. Let's space out the first name and last name here. Now it's time to actually enable the search function. As of now, if you type anything here, nothing happens. Come to our text input and let's add a prop called on change text. Every time a text is entered, a callback is called. So that callback here will take the value that's passed in the text input and then we'll call a method called search contacts. Let's go ahead and create this method. Here we'll pass in one parameter, which is the value. And then we have to basically just filter the contacts. So we'll say const filtered contacts is equal to this dot state dot contacts dot filter. We want to filter based on the contact. And here we'll first convert the contact into lowercase. And we'll also convert the search input to lowercase and then compare it. So we'll say let contact lowercase is equal to, we'll say contact dot first name plus give a space contact or last name and then we'll use the two lowercase method we'll convert the value to lowercase we'll say let search term lowercase is equal to value dot two lowercase then we'll do the comparison so we'll say return contact lowercase dot index of search term lowercase if that's greater than minus one then return that contact otherwise don't return it once we've got our filtered contacts, we'll just update the state. So we'll say this dot set state contacts is equal to filtered contacts and save that out. So let's test this out. When we type in a name, we do see that the name gets filtered, but when we erase the name, we notice that we don't get our contact list back. That's because we've actually just updated the contacts list here. So to fix this, what we'll do is in our load contacts method, once we get our contacts, We'll save the contacts into this contacts property and we'll also save it in another property which we'll be using to filter over. So we'll call this in memory contacts and set that to the data. Let's save that, come to our filter method and here instead of filtering over the contacts, 
Let's filter over the in-memory contacts. So when we search, the in-memory contacts are filtered through and the state is updated. But when we erase it, we again get our contacts from our state back. So as you can see, it works perfectly. As always, I hope you guys like this and try this out. And thank you for watching.